The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, our Lord. Jesus said this to his disciples. That is why I'm telling you not to be anxious about your life and what you are to eat, nor about your body and how you are to clothe it. Surely life means more than food and the body more than clothing. Consider the birds of the sky. They do not sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they are? Can any of you, for all his anguishing, add one single cubit to your span of life? And why be anxious about clothing? Think of the flowers of the fields. They never have to work or spin. Yet I assure you that not even Solomon in all his glory was robed like one of these. Now if that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is there today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, will he not much more look after you, O you of little faith? So do not be anxious. Do not say, what are we to eat? What are we to drink? How are we to be clothed? It is the pagans who set their hearts on all these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. Set your hearts on his kingdom first and on his righteousness and all these other things will be given you as well. So do not be anxious about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has trouble enough of its own. The Gospel of the Lord. Do not be anxious, says Jesus. Well, that's fine for Jesus, perhaps. But what about us? Here we are in lockdown and facing a pandemic that seems like a marathon with no finishing line. It's been 18 months of masks and lockdowns businesses collapsing and mental illness rising, sickness and death surrounding us in a way that we never thought possible, and all because of an invisible virus. How fragile everything now seems. No wonder we're anxious. And what about the poor widow of Zarephath, whom we met in the first reading? She's anxious for her son and herself because in a time of drought and famine, they have just about nothing to eat. I have only a handful of meal in a jar, she says, and a little oil in a jug. I'm gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat, and then we shall die. No wonder the widow is anxious. But what about Mary MacKillop? She certainly knew anxiety for all kinds of reasons, how she would pay the bills, how she would deal with difficult bishops, 
how she would keep her sisters on the right path, how she would manage the tensions with Father Woods, how she would cope with ill health later in life, and so on it went. No wonder Mary was anxious. Yet through it all, what marked St. Mary MacKillop was an uncanny serenity of spirit. St. Paul urges us in writing to the Colossians to clothe ourselves in kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And that's exactly what Mary MacKillop did. God alone knows how given some of the treatment she copped. St. Paul goes on, bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. And that's what Mary did. Which is why, as St. Paul says, the peace of Christ reigned in her heart against all the odds. The peace of Christ produced the serenity of spirit that marked Mary from beginning to end and set her apart as a saint. Mary suffered in ways that would have broken others, leaving them locked in a world of bitterness and resentment. But far from breaking her, the suffering somehow made Mary what she became. There are many crosses in the world, but only one of them creates rather than destroys, and that's the cross of Jesus Christ. That's the cross that Mary bore through her life, which is why it's so right that she's known as Saint Mary of the Cross. The cross that should lead to death led her to life. The wound became a fountain and millions have drunk from its life-giving waters both during her life and since. Time and again, Mary MacKillop, like the widow of Zarephath, faced situations where there seemed to be no way out problems that seem to offer no solution. Now I can only say that I know the feeling. How often have I as a bishop, and now as president of the bishops' conference, faced situations of that kind? No way out, no solution at hand. The pandemic is one of those, but so too is the plenary council, which has been so mightily impacted by COVID-19. Then there are the many challenges of dealing with sexual abuse in the church and the various financial crises which have flowed from that. How to stir new energies in a church which in so many ways is under pressure and institutionally diminished in a way we have never seen before in Australia. Faced with these and many other quandaries, I'm left feeling at times that I have only my need and my impotence, our need and our impotence. As with Mary MacKillop and the widow of Zarephath, the need is there for all to see, and it's great. It can seem even a matter of life and death, but I know that I can't meet the need. I can't solve the problem. No matter how hard I work or how much I anguish over it, I just can't do it. And that surely was something Mary MacKillop felt through her life. 
She saw what had to be done, but she just couldn't do it. Or at least she couldn't do it alone. That's where her extraordinary trust in God's providence kicked in. In coming to God as she did in the depth of her being, Mary could bring only her need and her impotence. But she also brought her faith. And that was the key. God has done wonders for us, she said, and wonderfully protected us in our helplessness. Mary's faith was a trust that God would do for her what God did for the widow of Zarephath. Do not be afraid, the prophet Elijah says to the widow. The jar of meal will not be spent and the jug of oil will not fail. And so it was. God provided for the widow and her son in ways that seemed simply impossible. The words of Jesus, do not be anxious, make sense only if we believe what he goes on to say. Your heavenly Father knows you need food and drink, clothing and shelter, and all the other things over which you fret. This is the God who cares for the birds of the air and the flowers of the field. How much more will God care for you? How much more does God care and provide for you in ways you scarcely recognize? That's what Mary MacKillop believed and why she set her heart first on the kingdom of God knowing that all else would be provided, as it was in mysterious ways, against the odds and against the logic of this world. In a time like this, with so much anxiety and negativity within us and around us, Mary is given by God as a witness to hope and a word of the deepest encouragement. Can slaves come forth from Egypt in a world that says, once a slave, always a slave? Well, yes, they can, says Mary. Can water come from a rock out in the desert? Well, yes, it can, she says. Can women past the age and even a virgin conceive a child? Well, yes, they can, she says. Can a dead man walk from the tomb? Well, yes, he can, says Mary. We wonder whether there's a future for us. Or if so, what kind of future there will be beyond the pandemic, if there ever is a beyond. We wonder what kind of future, if any, there will be for the church beyond the sexual abuse crisis for a community under such pressure and so diminished. We wonder will the plenary council provide us with a spirit-inspired impetus into the future, or will it be a squib that promises much and delivers little. We wonder what the church in this country will look like in 40 or 50 years' time. Faced with all this, Mary stands among us this morning and says simply, God will provide in the future. Echoing the prophet Elijah and the Lord Jesus, Mary says, do not be afraid. These are not her words. They are the words of Christ. And at some point, 
it is no longer just Mary we see and hear, but the risen Lord himself. That's what it means to call her, like all the saints, a witness to Easter before all else. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, says St. Paul. And in hearing Mary, we allow the word of Christ himself to dwell within us richly and deeply. That's why this morning, with all our needs and our impotence, with all our anxiety and negativity, we turn with Mary MacKillop to God in overflowing gratitude, which is, as she says, the memory of the heart. With her we give thanks to God the Father through Jesus, in whose name we do everything trusting that the God who provides for the birds of the air and the flowers of the field, for widows and for orphans, will also provide for us. Amen.